Welcome back to my channel. I'm here at Universal Studios Singapore bringing you updates on Halle Horror Nights 11. This year there are 500 houses, 3 scare zones and 2 shows along with a dining experience. Straight ahead is a new stage built at the end of Hollywood in front of the lagoon. This will be used for the Judgment Day opening ceremony show at the start of Halle Horror Nights. It looks like there will be many stunts and special effects used for this show including the return of fire effects. The key feature of this stage are the doors, and each door seems to represent a certain haunted house or scare zone at this year's event. There are also three additional screens that may also transform into doors or be used for special effects during the shows. Also in Hollywood is the Dining in Hell special experience which is thematically connected to the Di Yu Descend into Hell haunted house. This experience and the meals is an add-on all included with the RIP tour experience. During a media preview, I got to see two of the dishes that will be served during this experience which include the King Yama salad, which guests will have a chance to set the skull on fire, as well as the fleshy cut, a steak served on green risotto. The last dish is the level 10 bloody bites which will remain a mystery and you will have to die in hell to find out. Here are the other food and snacks that will be available during Howling Horror Nights all around the parks, carts and restaurants. Harley Horror Nights 11 merchandise has landed at the Universal Studios store and there are many things to buy this year. First, we have the lanyards. There are two designs. The first is themed to Yu Descend into Hell and it features skeleton hands, clouds, fire motifs on one side. The other side, we have King Yama's face as well as the eye. So this is a very loud sight to use if you want to scare someone at a meeting. Then for Grim Encounters, we have the Pied Piper and Rats on one side and the other side features the Red Riding Hood. The same illustrations can be found on button pin sets, a set of three for each haunted house. There's also a tote bag this year featuring the illustration from Grim Encounters. On the reverse side is the Howling Horror Nights logo. T-shirts are also back and there are two designs available, although only one was on sale when I was at the park. So this one features the Pike Piper on the front, and the back features the same illustration as the tote bag. Now let's head out and see haunted houses and scare zones. So for Di Yu Descend into Hell, it's at Hollywood. The queue will lead you into Soundstage 28 where your journey to hell begins. Right beside this entrance is the Hacker Scare Zone in New York. So far, the setup has been quite minimal with just three sets on the street itself and some of them have screens which will be displaying video games presumably. There is also a larger set nearer to the stage which looks like a game console has uh, transformed a game environment into the real world. Over at the New York Library, this is where the Hacker Game Over show will be taking place so don't miss that. And to the right of the stage is Another haunted house entrance, this is Netflix's All of Us Are Dead. The park has built a reproduction of the Gates to Hyosan High School. So this is the first IP house in Singapore that was announced way back in July. I'm sure many of you are very excited to experience the zombie outbreak and walk through various scenes inspired by the hit horror series. The next scare zone, Dead Man's Wharf, takes place in the New York Harbour but you have to get there via the side path from Sci-Fi City. There's only one entrance and it's likely that you can't stop walking while you're inside, so it might feel like a haunted house. Some of the past schedules were set up similarly such as the Pestilence in 2011 and Death Alley in HHN2. The park has sealed up the entrance to this schedule so I can't walk in further anymore but you can see some of the details of the entrance archway as well as the initial areas. Your journey starts off at the black market section where you will meet some of the sellers as well as the fortune teller. A few weeks ago, I managed to walk through this area before they sealed it up and here's a sneak peek of how they're using the space. Like past scare zones done in this area, it feels more like an outdoor haunted houses with these winding walkways. 
Your journey will continue into Sting Alley where you may meet more horrible characters and pirates as well as Madame Dragon herself. Let's head back to Sci-Fi City for the next haunted house and that is Grim Encounters. This is another original haunted house developed by the Singapore team. The story is based on the Pied Piper as well as other possible fairy tales such as the Red Riding Hood. So the whole thing is uh, being masked up with black walls so we can't really tell what's going on inside but it looks like it will be filled with a lot of rats since it's the Pied Piper after all. Haunted houses built here are usually constrained by space and other operational reasons so it looks like this will be a very intense house given how everything will be very compact. Over at Jurassic Park, we have the next haunted house, Rebirth of the Matriarch. This is a sequel to the very first haunted house built at USS called Vengeance of the Matriarch. But this time, as part of an expanded storyline, you will uncover the dark secrets of the Matriarch's family and witness her rebirth. In fact, if you go a few steps in, you can see some parts of the Veronica Mansion already. But please don't go any further. Beside the Matriarch's mansion in Jurassic Park is the other scare zone. The Cursed Kiramam. This is another village style scare zone held in Jurassic Park where you will experience the torment that the villagers are suffering from due to a demon god that has cursed the village and all its inhabitants. The only way to sort of appease the demon god is to sacrifice a bride called Agni, which was revealed during a media preview. So inside Jurassic Park itself, this year the park has sort of hidden everything, all the scary stuff into one corner of the Jurassic Park area. This is not part of the scare zone by the way, it's just guests sunning their clothes after the rapids ride. But anyway, beside it, this looks like a sacrificial stage of sorts because there's two gigantic tusk looking thingies. Behind those props at the Giant Skeleton Rest area, you can see the rest of the props here which has like torn textiles and cages as well as like village hut looking things. They are all basically compressed and blocked up by all these scenic panels and black walls. I guess the park wants guests to have a normal Jurassic Park experience during the day without all these horrifying things poking out and digging out onto the street. Now over at Waterworld, we have the Weekend After Hours Till Dawn Nightmare Haunted House. This is the second IP house for Singapore and it will feature 5 new rooms based on the Dawn FM album. I managed to also capture the house facade of the lights being tested. Thanks for watching this HHN 11 walkthrough tour. Stay tuned for more updates on Harley Horror Nights and Universal Studios Singapore.